Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review of the Harbor Freight Viking Lithium Ion Power Pack. Jump Starter Power Pack. It comes in a pretty nice case. I actually kind of like this set. This retails for $80. However, I was lucky enough to find this one on the uh, open box shelf. It's one advantage of Harbor Freight is back in the corner of the store. Uh, they have their open box like when a sock socket breaks and one of their socket sets They just give you a replacement socket off the shelf and then they take the remaining New sockets from the set that they did the warranty return on so it'll be like, you know a 10 piece They'll just put the other nine pieces back on their open box shelf And a lot of times it's pretty steeply discounted uh, in this case. This was $55 so I thought you know I'll go ahead and give it a shot and they of course allow you to return stuff that is on that open box shelf So I thought you know why not? It's a pretty good discount from the 80 but um, and the reason they said that uh, they had like a Little tag that said uh, wouldn't jumpstart diesel truck And I thought that was hilarious trying to use something like this to turn over a big diesel engine by the way, if people haven't seen under the hoods of those diesel Fords and Dodges, etc., they have like two motorhome batteries in there. <laughs> so a little jump starter is really not going to give you any, a significant amount of extra energy. A lot of complaints about these and then a lot of uh, satisfied reviews. These obviously work much better on a Honda Civic with a real small battery. Number two, these are not a replacement for a lead-acid battery. A property of a lead-acid battery is it can sacrifice all its capacity, basically in just a few a minute or two, being able to provide the horsepower that's needed, the thousands of watts that are needed to turn over an engine. It's really surprising, but to turn over a diesel engine could take 5 to 10 horsepower. Uh, most people, and someday I'll get a starter motor to take apart here, but starter motors don't look like any kind of normal uh, electric motor. They are a multiple horsepower motor that's meant to only run for uh, just a few seconds at a time. That's why everybody, you know, they always tell you not to turn over an engine too much because those motors basically don't have anywhere near the size uh, and cooling capacity and they get away with it because the starter motor only ever runs normally under for just a, uh, a couple of seconds. And it's one of the amazing things about DC motors is you can do that where you have a motor that can be many, many horsepower that is small. Um, you're just not going to be able to cool it properly under any kind of continuous use. This it by itself won't do that. What these are designed to do is that you left your lights on and the car is clicking or kind of trying to turn over but just can't. And it provides the extra boost to energy to get it to turn over and actually start up. If you have a completely dead battery where you have no dash lights, no dome lights or anything, that lead acid battery is just totally dead. When you plug this in, all it's trying to do is charge it. That lead acid battery, uh, a dead one, will just zap all the available power uh, that's coming out of this unit and you're just using it to dump 100. I mean, this has 144 watts of capacity. It's a lith lithium ion, so it'll deliver most of that capacity. But... It's not going to be able to provide thousands of watts of surge current. This will provide a few hundred watts of surge current to help a low battery. But if you have a dead battery, it's just going to be suck, sucking up whatever this is putting out. And that's one thing to remember. A lot of the bad reviews kind of stem from that is the fact that um, they have a really dead battery. And so you would need a power pack four or five times the size of this to actually overcome the dead battery and provide enough energy to start the car. The second thing they tell you is to leave it on the battery for a few minutes, and that's related to the earlier thing where the lead acid can deliver more energy in a shorter period of time than a lithium ion. It will just make various sacrifices, and I really won't get into them in this review. So the deal is you attach this and actually leave it plugged in for a few minutes to actually use it to recharge the lead acid battery, and then combine with this and the lead, the lead acid or the car battery that has a little bit of extra charge just put into it, then it will allow you to get it to kick over. And so that's one critical thing is you'll have a better experience with one of these if you let it sit and try to charge that lead acid for a few minutes. If it's full, heck, you know, let it drop down to 50% and then try kicking over the car. A lot of people, you know, and also make sure the doors are shut and the keys are out of the ignition so that you're not just zapping power, you know, driving light bulbs and stuff. 
And another fortunate issue which hinders the performance of these and why a lot of them are actually surprisingly expensive and large is because so many cars have daytime driving lights or automatic headlights. So when you try to jump start it, those headlights kick on and zap up a whole bunch more power. So it's kind of a tough situation to have a small compact jump starter that really works. The second issue with these is that they're lithium ion. So if they're left in a freezing trunk, they're going to really have a uh, much lower performance. And that's something to keep in mind. This is generally something you want to keep in the house so it stays at a moderated temperature, doesn't get cooked in the summer and frozen in the winter, which makes it a little less convenient. But it's kind of the nature of the beast. Uh, one thing I was going to comment about is that it is a lithium ion ferrite polymer battery. Um, you see 12 volts, 12,000 milliamp hours. Uh, so the back label will be advertised as uh, 144 watt hours. And those lithium, the LifePo 4s will actually deliver that. They'll deliver 90 95% of that power in an hour. So you could literally drive a 100 watt light bulb for uh, nearly an hour and a half off this power pack, probably an hour and 20 minutes, and it would actually do that. A lead acid battery actually wouldn't. If you had a 140 watt lead acid battery and plugged in a 100 watt light bulb, it might run it for 30 minutes. And that's, you know, the weird and but lead acid that's the thing it will sacrifice disproportionately its capacity but it can deliver a huge amount of power in a very short period of time this power pack i sus you know i can't remember what they uh claimed it but i would suspect that this could sustain sustain a short burst of 500 to 800 watts maybe a horsepower but that means that you're the rest of it's still going to have to be taken up by a res residual energy in the lead acid so really this would be much you know better use just to try to charge that lead acid until it drops down a couple of pixels and then uh, giving it a kickstart. Let's get into <laughs> enough of that prequel. You know, when you turn these, turn this on, you hold the power button for a second, and then we have these four blue lights. And it's kind of hard to see in the camera, but they do, oh, you can see it pulsing. So the blue lights actually are switch mode. They're not all lit up at the same time, but they're just switching so fast that you can see it. When you do the jump start mode, it switches over. I think there's a little transistor in there, and that connects the main output. And they did include a rubber cover, so you don't shock yourself when that happens. And it's a really bright green light when it's in the jump start mode. It's really surprising. And if you just press that again, it returns to normal mode. It does have a built-in flashlight, which is actually surprisingly bright. <clears throat> it also has a... SOS mode as well as just a flashing mode so I thought that was actually a pretty good idea um, when you're running the flashlight eventually the power level indicators will turn off but the flashlight will stay on but if you press and hold the power button it will turn off one thing that is a little frustrating and I've noticed about this and look, we probably should get that out of the way and then I'll sh quickly show you uh, inside but when you turn it on, it activates both the USB charging and the 12 volt charging. However, if it has an auto power off feature. And so what's kind of annoying is like you may use this to run, you know, uh, some 12 volt, you know, speaker or something like that. And if the music pauses and the speaker goes to low draw, uh, it will automatically turn off so it's load sensing so if you have a certain situation where the load comes on and then turns off again this may shut down and you'll wonder what's going on it's just because uh, you know below probably about five watts detects it as no load however the USB charging does continue to function and it's a little bit weird I never understood why there's that difference between the ports the second big issue with this is that it's the world's noisiest 5 volt or USB output plug uh, I have this ancient, like, eight-year-old MP3 player, but it has a FM tuner. So it, you plug it into a speaker and use it as a radio. And what I've noticed is, you know, if I plug this into a more standard, you know, like, phone power pack, like this thing, um, it's great. When I plug it into this, there's actually a bunch of noise. You hear a bunch of noise, so it's a really high noise uh, USB power plug. But since the 12 volt out plug is actually more, you know, it's not running through a converter to convert the, what's this, a 14.4 volt power pack down to 5 volts, the 12 volt output seems to be totally fine, which is weird. 
Uh, it does take 12 to 15 volts input for a charge. So it does come with a wall wart charger. It comes with a uh, car plug charger. Um, what is handy is it has a cigarette lighter adapter that goes into the 12 volt. So that makes it a little bit handier if you have like a GPS unit or something and you want to drive it with this. And then of course it has, and let's get this out of the way here, the actual jumper cables. And let's take a look at those real fast. They're actually not too bad. I, I thought these were just fine. They have pretty heavy duty conductor or jaws in them. What I also liked about them is they're uh, intelligently, the power wire that comes in, if you look down in there, there is a link wire. So it's not just one jaw that's active. Both jaws are active in these. And I've, that's probably a very wise decision. Helps reduce resistance. It has this, which is an inline fuse, uh, just for safety. And then there's your heavy duty plug. It has a special shape in it, so you can't do it backwards. And when we open this up, we can see our two terminals, and they're actually recessed, so it's hard for you to accidentally touch them with your finger. And even at uh, you know 14 volts, you'll still feel pretty good shock. But they are very heavy-duty terminals made for high current. When you plug this in, it's actually a really nice solid connection, and so I did want to point that out. It's really, it's like uh, high-quality audio cables. There is a bright red light, so that happens when it's too low or it detects a short or something like that, uh, which is kind of nice. And it also has a beep. So, and it has a little breakdown in the manual, the various different, you know, errors, whether it beeps or it just flashes this, letting you know whether it's a low battery or whether there's a short or whether it's reverse polarity, etc. So it is nice. It has some protection features. So inside and let me get some of this cleared up actually. Actually, before I even do that, I was going to mention that it does have a nice heavy duty, high quality sticker on the back, which is, uh, um, you know, like a plastic laminated sticker and it includes the general quick start garden instructions. So I thought that was actually pretty wise. And it's rubberized and seems relatively heavy duty, but then uh, I realized something. So let me show you inside and then we'll quickly test it. That way I can make sure because this is something. I'm either going to try to sell to a friend or, you know, return. So I don't want to damage this in any capacity. So I'm not going to fully open it up or peel off any stickers. But there is no, like, warranty void uh, tamper stickers that came on this. So I think it'll be okay on this little review. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to go too crazy on this. I just wanted to show basically what's inside because it was really easy. It just pops open. And so... And what I was noticing is there's only screws on the front and there's nothing on the back. So I thought maybe they're under the sticker or something. And I just tried it and it was real easy. And it actually just opens up like a clamshell. And I'm not going to open it all the way up. Uh, what's surprising on the back is they're actually... This sticker provides structural integrity to the case. It's really surprising. I thought that, you know, when I pulled those screws, it might be too much tension because a lot of times... Uh, on those plastic things, they'll use screws on the front and then they'll have like a catch system like this, but it runs the entire length, so it's you know pretty secure. But on this Harbor Freight, it's actually whoop, there goes my little on the Harbor Freight, and I don't know if we can see down in there. If I can, it's so tough to get a good angle on the light. You can see right in the very back, there's like a little notch there and a little notch there. There's just two little finger hooks. So if you drop this, uh, very likely um, the back half of the case is going to come apart, and if, especially if you pull off the sticker, which is surprising. So anyway, I just wanted to show that it is uh, a custom formed. It's not using like 18650 cells. You can see the two black wires on the top that go under the sticker. So it has a proper charger, uh, which is nice. Uh, with you know thermal protection one thing about lithium ion ferrite polymer batteries is they meet all the all the advertisement about all the cycle life and that kind of stuff they there's a many different types of lithium ion lithium ion cobalt lithium air lithium ferro uh you know lithium polymer lithium uh ferro phosphate and they all get categorized in the, as lithium ion batteries, but these ones aren't the ones that explode and just have a huge fire like a cell phone. A cell phone uses a special type of lithium ion to get the power densities they need. These will off gas, they'll get hot, but there's a lot of YouTube videos of LifePo batteries and they are actually the safe ones. And they really are, if you take care of them, you can get 
thousands of charge cycles out of them. Um, so it's, you know, that's a big deal. Um, they do have two heavy duty conductors and it's just a battery wired straight to the terminal. And the positive lead goes straight in. The negative lead goes through the board and then there's like a big transistor there, which I suspect is like a, a MOSFET switch. And so it just switches the negative side when you actually enable jump start mode. But that is, you know, proper heavy duty wires. We can see right here this whole set of wires. Those are balanced charging, so it actually is a balance. It isn't just blindly charging a lithium ion power pack. This is still three, or excuse me, four um, 3.6 volt cells. So this will be outputting nominally 14.4 volts because uh, if it were to actually be three cells, it'd only be 10.8 volts, and that you know wouldn't do anything on a car. So it's actually providing quite a bit of extra voltage uh, to try to overcome the issues with a low battery, etc. So, you know, inside, it's, you know, what you would expect. And I'm actually incorrect. These power wires are something associated with the 12-volt and the 5-volt system. That little connector in the back is the balance wires. But that's kind of interesting. There is a whole heck of a lot of wires going into this battery. Actually, if you add those balance wires, we're talking 6. I mean, there's like a dozen wires going in and out of this battery. <laughs> That's a little surprising. But it can be serviced. Actually, those are all plugs. Everything is plugs. There's actually even another set of wires right here. So I'm really surprised. There's a zillion little uh, wires inside this thing. Um, but yeah, it's all on plugs. And it can be disassembled and potentially repaired. And I thought that was nice. So I just wanted to quickly show and cite it. Because there's a, you know, these have been out for about a year, and I looked around YouTube, and I don't think there's a single YouTube channel that's actually just where somebody just said, you know, if I undo those two screws, does it easily pop open? And it does. You can see where they have like a little convolution here on both sides to try to hold the case together. But that's probably the most disappointing aspect of this is that um, the case is actually not so great, and I really would worry about whether or not this uh when you drop this this thing breaking apart because you're literally relying on two little clasps on the back the sticker and then these two little screws and these screws don't go into solid plastic those screws go into these posts which notoriously break off okay we actually got that thing back together but i thought you know you might want to see what's inside this and there's actually quite a bit going on one of the reasons they're so expensive, but really, you're just paying for that custom battery, and we got to make sure this thing still wants to cooperate. It seems it does. Good. I thought it was interesting that the LED was actually on a little card and a plug, so if you're an ingenuitive type... Um, you could actually change that out if you wanted a colored LED for some reason. Maybe you just want it red or something like that. You could upgrade it. So let's actually do a couple little tests here. Um, we have a decent multimeter to do these tests with. I don't think many people will complain about this if it wouldn't, the wires wouldn't get tangled. Uh, we have a Fluke 375 here. So that's a true RMS. And... If I had an oscilloscope, I could show what was going on with that 5 volt. But a lot of people complain that their devices take forever to charge for some reason off this 5 volt plug. It's because it has so much noise that I'm sure it's just uh, really causing a lot of issues for the charging circuits inside phones. Because I noticed the same issue. I tried charging my phone and it just took hours and it just didn't even make any sense where... Um, even off the other little power pack I was showing earlier just uh, seemed to charge the phone a lot faster than this thing did. And it's really that very noisy plug. And then on this thing with the 12 volt outlet, they need to do something. I understand the power saving mode, but basically the circuit needs to be more sensitive. It needs to be set lower than whatever it is, 5 or 10 watts, because in many situations, whatever device you're using isn't just going to be pulling a continuous dozens of watts. It's going to pull some watts and then stop pulling power maybe and then pull some watts again. And that's kind of a big deal. Um, it really has too high a sensitivity. So let's go and test that 12 volt. The 12 volt just activates when you turn. Actually, we should make sure, right? 
I have actual, a special wire to make this more safe, which will plug into there and it actually gives me the same plug on the other end. So I don't have to worry about shocking myself. And the standard for these is the positives, the internal terminal, and then the negatives, the external terminal. So we can see it's actually not active. We'll turn it on. And then when we turn it on, that's actually regulated. Look at that, 13.3 volts. It's surprising. That's uh, really good. That's uh, an optimal voltage. Uh, charging systems center on at 13.5 to 13.8 volts. I believe 13.8 volts is the standard in automobiles. So 13.3 volts is actually a nice compromise, and I'm surprised they actually uh, have it tuned out to that voltage. So that was a, a good situation. We'll go and turn this back on again. See, it's really aggressive. When those lights turn off and there's no load in the 12 volt, your 12 volt is shut down. So let's take a look at these guys here, and they're also convenient to test. So when it's turned on, we can see that we have half a volt coming out of that thing, which is kind of interesting. If we turn it off, the 12 volt output had no voltage, but on this, with it turned on, we had half a volt. Oh, that's interesting. When we turned it off, we have 12.9 volts. That doesn't make any sense. We turn it on and it drops to half a volt. I've never really thought about that, so that must be the resting voltage of the battery. But what doesn't make sense is we just saw that the black wire connects to the motherboard and then there's another black wire which goes to the output in that big transistor. So I don't really understand uh, maybe the MOSFET, that's this leakage voltage and the multimeter is just able to pick it up but we can't really place a real load on it. We're actually going to investigate that right now because that actually could be a safety concern there. What I have here is actually a 12 volt, you know, automotive incandescent bulb. This is like a little two or three watt. I'm not using an LED because the LED can be lit up by a very tiny amount of power. But if it's able to dump a couple three watts and light up this bulb, then that would be a real issue because it would indicate that it is possibly active even though you have the unit turned off. No, it must be like some kind of leakage voltage. Because that's not... Oh, now you can't even see it because of the stupid cords. Not lighting up. We'll make sure this isn't failed. Don't do this at home. This is where these would be totally active, so be careful. Yeah. So, it has a leakage voltage at uh, when it's turned off which is a little bit odd, but it can't on uh, do that MOSFET, but it's not something that's going to be able to actually shock you because it has such a, it won't even light up that light bulb, so it has less than a couple watts of leakage. Actually, that light bulb didn't even try to light, light up, but it's a little weird that it still does leak like that. I guess we should test its voltage when we have it activated. If it's 12.9 there, put it in jump start mode. And let's see what we got. It's convenient, the little holes in these terminals. The same 13.3 volts. So it's dumping 13.3 into, um, into the battery. So I don't know if that's actually restricted to 13.3 or if the battery is not exactly 3.6 volt cells. That may also be a possibility. I'm not exactly sure because it's a custom wrapped flat battery. Anyway, you saw what that was. That's a 12 amp hour pack that's like this wide, this, you know, only about this long, maybe, you know, as thick as this sticker, a little bigger than this sticker, and about this deep uh, is what's 144 watts of power. And that's really what you're paying for in this device, is that's just not a cheap battery pack, even though it's only a 12 amp hour. It is using a nice technology. But to give you an idea, the battery in this unit is less than half, you know, is only a third that fills a third of this case or something, maybe half of the case. If you had a 12 amp hour lead acid battery, it would be the size of two of these units, the entire cases put together. That's how big it would be. And on a lead acid battery to actually get out the 140 watts of power, uh, it would actually be rated on 20 hour discharge rate. When they rate 
the amp hours on lead acid batteries, it's not completely honest because it's based on a 20 hour rate. That's how slow you have to discharge a lead acid battery to actually get its advertised output. The deal with this, and it's 140 watts, um, is it's absolutely true with the LifePo batteries. You could drain this in five to 10 minutes and it would still deliver you the 140 watts. The big lead acid, that was 140 watt. If you tried dra draining that uh, at the same rate, it would last about a third, a third to half as long as what this would. And the, the best taking care of lead acid battery only gets you three to 500 charges. 500 charges would be the limit uh, of a lead acid battery that was just really well taken care of, not excessively discharged, not repeatedly overcharged, etc. Properly exercised. So, I mean, they're not lying to people when they with this battery pack. It's just the, trying to be realistic on what they're trying, what they're doing here, which is replacing a huge heavy lead acid battery, which has all these disadvantages, except for the fact that. Uh, when push comes to shove, they can dry. They can just sacrifice their capacity to just to push amps, and that's why they work so darn well in a car. The second reason they work so well in the car is they're uh, easy to charge. You just need to give them a voltage that basically doesn't go above 13.8 or so, um, and you don't have to worry about it like that. You don't need balancing and all this jive. They tend not to blow up unless they're grossly overcharged, and then they off gas. And another aspect of lead acid that most people don't know is that 99% of all lead and lead acid batteries is recycled. They are one of the few, as far as products that are made by humans, the lead acid battery is arguably one of the most completely recycled or known as the closed loop as you can get. Uh, it's kind of crazy to think about that. Uh, there are some places all out there on the internet that show that say that it is 99% recycling rate on a lead acid battery. That's almost entirely closed loop. You produce a product and then you're able to recycle the old used up product and then may have almost enough material where you're able to make a new one without having to mine anything new. It's actually quite surprising. It does show that it is possible. Anyway, that was the end of this kind of long and extended review of the Harbor Freight Viking uh, power pack, but I thought I was able to add some additional information and uh, dispel some myths and kind of try to hit on points that maybe some of the other reviews maybe didn't, uh, you know, fully cover. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and please do subscribe to the Caddis Maximus channel. Until next time, Caddis Maximus.